A lot of people have asked, how do the internal workings of a singing birdcage work, and specifically the whistle? And so I just finished two. The, I already put the top back on this very early antique Carl Griesbaum example. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to make a video. And so this one here, this movement, is not as old as this one. But this one is still dates to just right after World War II. So this would be, you know, late 1940s. So I fully serviced the mechanism. So I'm going to explain how everything works. So in the gear train, this is the governor fan. And so that's the part of the gear train that's going to have the highest velocity, but the least amount of force. And then through the gear train, it goes through various gears and it ends up, it actually starts with the mainspring, which has the least velocity, but the most force. So let me just show you this. I'm going to turn this on. So what's happening here, so here is, here is the whistle. And the air from the whistle would come out right there. Okay, now I'm going to stop it. So what we have here, this lever here rides against cams that are fitted on the bottom of the, uh, the mainspring barrel. And those cams allow this lever to go in and out. As this lever pushes inside the whistle, that changes the pitch and it makes it higher. As this is out, the pitch would be lower. You know, so a deeper sound. This paddle right here controls the airflow through this rod. There's a tiny springings, spring inside. And this also is controlled by a second set of cams on the going barrel. So, so watch how this works. So you see the top rod is changing the pitch. And that allows air to go through the whistle, which allows for the breaks in the notes. Now this is the bellows. So the bellows is a two-stage bellows. And that means that air is able to flow to the whistle on both the upstroke and the downstroke. So as the bellows pump, there are one-way valves inside the bellows, and that would push air into the top part of the bellows, which is called the air reservoir. And then the air reservoir has a one-way valve that pushes air into the air chamber right behind the whistle. So the bellows pump, air goes into the air reservoir, that goes into the air chamber, and then this rod here, controlled via the cams, allows the, the built-up air pressure to escape through the whistle. And depending upon where the plunger is sitting inside of this whistle, this is sort of like a trombone, if you will, it, uh, it changes the pitch. This paddle here activates levers that control the bird animation, both the beak, the tail, and the head. It's a, it's a very cool concept, and a, uh, I mean, when you think way back, you know, when these were invented, it's, it's just amazing, you know, what human beings can do and the machines that they can make. But I thought I would make a, a quick video. I mean, this isn't one that would be um, applicable if someone were to try to fully you know, repair and restore a piece themselves, but it does provide a good summary overview on how the mechanism works. Take care.